Athletics Academy. I'm Heather Crocker. I'm the Communications and Recruitment Specialist for Athletics Academies. My job is to help families find our wonderful schools. I'm here to read The Bed Book by Sylvia Plath, and I want to dedicate this to my mother, who used to read this book, to my sisters and myself. Sylvia Plath was a famous poet, and she is little known for writing also a children's story called The Bed Book. The Bed Book by Sylvia Plath. Beds come in all sizes, single or double, cot size or cradle, king size or trundle. Most beds are beds for sleeping or resting, but the best beds are much more interesting. Not just a white little, tucked in tight little, nighty night little, turn out the light little bed. Instead, a bed for fishing, a bed for cats. A bed for a troop of acrobats. The right sort of bed, if you see what I mean, is a bed that might be a submarine, nosing through water, clear and green, silver and glittery as a sardine. or a jet-propelled bed for visiting Mars with mosquito nets for the shooting stars. If you get hungry in the middle of the night, a snack bed is good for the appetite. With a pillow of bread to nibble at and up at the head, an automat where you need no shillings, just a finger to stick in the slot and out come cakes and cold chicken. Another bed that fills the bill is the sort of bed that is spottable. In a spottable bed, it never matters where jam rambles and where paint splatters, or if the cat and the parakeet dance on the covers with muddyish feet. On the other hand, if you want to move, a tank bed's the bed most movers approve. A tank bed's got cranks and wheels and cogs and levers to pull if you're stuck in bogs. A tank bed's treads go upstairs or down through duck ponds or through a cobbledy town. And if you're snug inside, if it rains or hails, a tank bed's got everything but sails. Now a gentler bed is a good deal more the sort of bed bird watchers adore. A kind of hammock between two tall trees where you can swing in the leaves at ease. All the birds would flock, if I'm not mistaken, to your berries and cherries and bits of bacon. None of these beds, of course, is very easy to fold up or fetch and carry, so a pocket-sized bed is a fine bed to own when you're eating out with friend Jim or Aunt Joan. And they say, it's too bad you can't stay overnight, but there isn't an extra bed in sight. You can take out your bed shrunk small as a pea and water it till it grows suitably. Yes, a pocket-sized bed works very well, only how can you tell, how can you tell it won't shrink back to the size of a pea while you're asleep in it? Then where would you be? Oh, here is a bed shrink proofer than that, a floatier, boatier bed than that. In an elephant bed, you go where you please. You pick bananas right out of the trees. An elephant bed is where kings ride. It's cool as a pool in the shade inside. You can climb up the trunk and slide down behind. Everyone knows elephants don't mind. And when it's lots of degrees below, a North Pole bed is the best I know. A North Pole bed is made of fur. It's fine if you're an explorer or if you just have a very cold nose. There's a built-in oven to warm your toes. Oh, who cares much if a bed's big or small, lumpy or bumpy, who cares at all, as long as its springs are bouncy and new. From a bounceable bed, 
You bounce into the blue over the hollyhocks, toodaloo, over the owls, to wit to who, over the moon to Timbuktu, with springier springs than a kangaroo. You can see if the Big Dipper's full of stew, and you may want to stay up a week or two. These are the beds for me and for you. These are the beds to climb into. Pocket-sized beds, beds for snacks, tank beds, beds on elephant backs, beds that fly or go underwater, bouncy beds, beds you can spatter and spotter, bird-watching beds, beds for zero weather, any kind of bed as long as it's rather special and queer and full of surprises, beds of amazing shapes and sizes. Not just a white little, tucked in, tight little, nighty night little, turn out the light little bed. And that is The Bed Book by Sylvia Plath. Good night.